Welcome, welcome. Hey, okay. I'm trying to push a few buttons here. Welcome to the first Fillmore live stream. I know a few of you have been waiting in the chat. We're trying to get the form up and running. If you have Fillmore questions, there is a link in the description where you can drop your questions right now so that I can answer them during the stream. It's kind of hard for me to keep up with the chat, so I miss some. Uh, my pal Ed Marvin is out there from Flash in Your Pan who will help drop that link if you need it, but I'm glad to see you here. I'm very excited to answer some questions for you today. Uh, and let's get this thing going. Let's not even play around. <laughs> let's see who's in the chat. I'm going to look over this way. Uh, I'm going to see a Wisdom Ebenezer, Stairway to Freedom, Pam. Pam Duffy, my best friend, the lovely Pam Duffy, Ed Marvin, Magdalena Co. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Always a pleasure to see you. Uh, listen, earbud, earbud vlogs. Wow, we got a local. We have a local in the house. Listen, one of the things that I've been trying to do for a long time is to, can you guys hear me okay? Everything sound good? You can see okay? Everything's working all right? I try to remind you guys I'm still new at this, so some of these things were working out some of the kinks. So scream out if something in there doesn't do what it's supposed to, and I'll uh, tweak some buttons. Um, one of the things I've been wanting to do since I first started this channel is to get to the point, let me kill some music. This is the music going on. You know, like Daniel, the music's going on. Can you maybe lose the music? That I can do. Um, one of the things I've been trying to do since we first started, uh, this, for, since this ch channel first started, was to get to the point where I could go live, we could talk about Filmora, we could do some of the things that I've been meaning to do for a long time. Because every time I put out a Filmora video, what happens is I get a, a 9 million questions in the comments section, right? You guys all have questions about that video, you have questions about other things that you want to learn how to do, and I do my best to stay up with those, but it's super hard to make sure that I'm really on point with everything that I'm trying to explain. And YouTube doesn't do a great job of allowing me to like put pictures in the comments so I can't just go like you know click this button you know look it looks like this so I wanted to try doing this live stream to see what you guys think um and and be able to answer questions on the fly and walk you through some of the things that I do on Filmora so that if you know, some of the things that seem a little more complicated I can just show you immediately and some of the things you have a question about I can pop them up on screen and screen and go here you go there it is right so listen, one of the things I want to focus on today, um, I'm going to start with. I've got a list of questions. The link is down in the description. If you have questions, I will answer them. But one of the most common questions I get is figuring out how to use the, um, the pan and zoom feature. It's one that I think some people understand. Like they know how to do simple pans and simple zooms. But I use this feature more than any other. And I zoom all around my screen and I get it to chase. And every time I... I make a video about it. I get a lot of questions about uh, how did you do that? I didn't quite understand. Could you tell me how you tweaked that one little part? So I want to start with showing you guys some of the things that I use with the crop and the zoom and the pan features right in Filmora 9. Does that sound good? Is that a good place to start? But feel free to drop some questions into that link. I'll be following them along the way. I'll be answering everything I can possibly answer. Again, this stream is not sponsored by Filmora. I am not a Filmora expert. I'm just a guy like you. I'm a creator using Filmora 9. Um, but I do have some access to some of the things that you guys may not. I'm currently beta testing the next version of Filmora, uh, which is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. That's supposed to be out. I think that was one of the questions. I'll, I'm, I'll get to it. But the new version, uh, 9.2, is looking to come out at the end of the summer from what they've told me. And they're really, really pushing hard to get this thing updated to do a lot of the things that you guys ask. When you guys ask questions and suggest things to Filmora, like where's the render button, right? That's one of the big ones. Where's the render button? Where is uh, things like motion capture? We're not going to see motion capture quite yet, I don't think, but some of these other things that we have been having problems with, lag, render buttons, these are all things they're trying to get worked out and we're going to be seeing sooner than later. So that's a good thing. All right, let me do this. Uh, I'm going to start down here with a, uh, let me show you my screen. I'm going to capture my screen. All right, so here is a really basic Film Fillmore 9 window. You guys have seen this a million times. This is what you guys look at every time uh, you open up Filmora. 
one of the things that I get asked about a lot is how to do really simple pan and zoom effects that work in a way that keeps your screen moving in a fluid manner. And it's something that uh, it's super important to me because I do it in almost every video. I think if any of you guys have ever watched the way that I scroll around a window when I'm doing a tutorial, it's really easy to see um, how how I go from one portion of the screen to another portion of the screen. Uh, but I do it so fluidly that I think sometimes you guys are like, man, I you explained it, but I don't know that I totally followed you. So let me show you some real basic features when it comes to the pan and zoom feature. What I do here is I'm, I've got a couple of preloaded things in here. This is just a straight piece of um, an image. It's not even a piece of footage. I've used this one before. It's just a piece of footage that I grabbed from pixabay.com. If you guys don't know what pixabay.com is, it's a great site where you can download some free uh, images, some free video stuff. You can even get some free chroma key stuff that has either video or images where you can remove the background. You guys have seen me do some of the things with um, even Movavi where I did the the uh, newsroom intro. I get all that stuff from either Pixabay or sometimes Pexels. And I like free. Free is always a good price range for people who are out there just trying to make content and, <laughs> and not spend every penny in their wallet. But I want to show you something. And if I go too fast here, let me know. I'm going to try to keep an eye on what's going on in the comments so that I can stay up. But one of the things that I always talk about is how to get your pan and zoom to move around a screen. So in this particular case here, we have a piece of, uh, we have a, just an image. If you notice, all I'm doing here is left clicking up above. I'm left clicking and I'm stretching that out. I haven't extended the length of that footage. I'm just stretching it out so that I can actually see it a little better. Uh, and when you right click on any piece of footage, I put my cursor on the footage and right click, it gives me the option to crop and zoom. All right. And when you click on crop and zoom, it immediately defaults to this crop feature. And what I want you to understand is all this does is it just changes the overall crop of the picture up in that preview window. Right. So you could move this anywhere. If I really wanted, I had this great image and I said, geez, I really want to just look at the Cadillac lounge. I like this picture, but for what I'm using, I only want that Cadillac lounge section. I could just crop in click on OK, and then up here, that's all that, that this entire piece of footage will use for this section, Cadillac Lounge. It never changes. But a lot of times, we're not looking to just do this one thing. We're looking to move around. Uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to do the um, undo this. Little tip for you guys. Hold the Control button. Hit the Z key on your keyboard. Undoes whatever's in front of you. You can also do that by coming up here. You can actually, on the edit feature, click undo in the upper left, which will say control Z next to it. That'll undo. So if you ever do something in Filmora and you go, oh, that's not what I meant to do, either click up on the edit and hit undo or click control, hold the control button on your keyboard in the lower left and hit Z and it'll walk you back a step. And you can actually walk back several steps, which is super helpful because a lot of times, I'll do something that I'm like, oh man, I'm three steps past something and I realized I made a mistake and then I have to fix it. Using that undo feature is super helpful. So let me show you something. One of the things I like to do, hold on, I got noise going on around here. I always got some noise going on. Um, one of the things I like to do is I like to move around a screen. So in this particular image here, I'll take a image like this and I'll want to zoom up to maybe that Cadillac lounge in the upper left and then move down to the lower right. And the way I'll do that is I'll actually have to separate on the screen where I want those transitions to happen. That's where this playhead comes into play. This red line that goes along your footage is super, super important. That's the way that Filmora decides where different things will happen. You actually have to slice your footage to decide where one thing stops and the next thing starts. So a lot of times I'll go like, all right, I have an image here and I wanna zoom up towards that Cadillac lounge. So I'll move that playhead to about where in the timeline I want that to happen. I'll go up to the slice button, which is that little pair of scissors up in the, right below the, um, 
the uh, my projects line here, and it cuts those into two pieces. Now I can right click on the first piece, hit the crop and zoom feature, and then I can say, great, I'll click over to pan and zoom in the upper, and I can say, great, I wanna take that and I wanna zoom in to Cadillac Lounge. And if you notice, when I click on these separately, I don't know if my mouse is showing up, um, the start is your first place. This is the start window in the pan and zoom. And there's a smaller orange end screen. Whichever one of those I put my cursor in size inside of and click on, I can adjust. And this is the whole game when it comes to pan and zoom, is we are trying to figure out the box we're looking at and then the box we're trying to get to. It's almost like looking through, trying to draw the picture of what we'd like to see at the end. And then what Filmora does is it takes those two boxes, the start box and the end box, and over the period of whatever your piece of footage is, it takes it starts with the start and moves towards the end box, whatever sizes each of those are. So for like the Cadillac Lounge, if I wanted to zoom in, I'd zoom into Cadillac Lounge. I would end it there. You can see there's a start and an end frame, and I'd say, okay. Right. So at the beginning, I just happened to take this piece of footage and say, well, I'd like to zoom in from the full frame to that Cadillac lounge. Boom. And it does that. The problem is, did you catch this right here? It zooms in towards the Cadillac lounge slowly because I told this first section that I snipped to start from full frame and I assigned it to go down to the Cadillac lounge. But the minute it got to the point where I snipped it, it goes right back to a full frame because I didn't assign anything to this second section. This is something that I talk to you guys about all the time, and I don't know that I always explain it as well as I could. So I'll totally take the blame for this. What I'm going to do is let me eliminate this first section. I'm going to slide this over. We're just looking at this full frame again. When I talk about moving around the screen, the way I do that, I start by taking this entire piece of footage and I crop it in. So let's say I wanted to start by going from the full frame and ending up at Cadillac Lounge. So I would right click on the footage, I would scroll up to crop and zoom from the options menu, and I wouldn't even use pan and zoom. I actually just use the crop and I crop to Cadillac Lounge. And this will make sense to you in a minute why you have to do it this way. So now I'm going to crop into Cadillac Lounge, and I use these border lines here to sort of center things and go, okay, perfect. I want to get that Cadillac Lounge falling right in the middle. That looks kind of centered. Now the entire piece of footage is cropped to Cadillac Lounge, which seems backwards of what you want to do, right? You're like, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to zoom into it. But the reason we do this is really important. Now I can go back and say, let me take a beginning section of this footage, let's say 20 or so frames in right here, and let's snip it using that scissors tool. Now I have two sections of footage that are both zoomed into the Cadillac Lounge, but I can go back to the first section, right click on it, and hit crop and zoom. And it's still zoomed into that section, but if I hit pan and zoom, I get those two windows again start and end, right? So we know from the beginning, we wanted to start with that big full screen and then zoom in and have it hang at the Cadillac Lounge. Down in the lower right here, there's two little arrows that look like, like the recycling arrows here. Can you see them over here? I'm gonna click on those and those reassign the two windows. So the start window becomes the end and the end window becomes the start. And you can flip them back and forth and the green one is always the active window. So we'll flip those so that the start is now the center window and we'll put it all the way back to full screen by clicking, left clicking and stretching it. And now this first section is saying we're gonna start at this big window, zoom into that end and we'll hit okay. But the difference is when I play this, it starts full screen, it zooms in and stays there. Do you see that? Now it's staying there. That was the issue we had before. 
Whoa, I don't even know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 500. I don't even know what, what monetization this is. Love your videos. They have been really helpful from Indianistic. Thank you so much for the super chat. Someone's going to have to get my monetary uh, my, my monetary uh, values in check here. I have no help. That could have been. I might be able to retire or that may have bought me a candy bar. I don't know which one. But thank you either way. Thank you so much. I appreciate that super chat. So again, so where we were, right? We took this. We now have it zooming in to the Cadillac Lounge, and now this whole piece of footage is still sitting at Cadillac Lounge, right? How cool is that? Now what we can do from here is we can say, all right, I want to sit on Cadillac Lounge for a while, right? I wanted it to zoom and sit there. So we move our playhead over, right? Let's say, you know, this is stuff you'll figure out when you're actually doing it yourself and saying how long you want it to hang. Let's pick a little chunk and say, I want it to hang for this much, right? Wherever I put the playhead. Slice it again. So now I have the first section. Let me review, just to make sure. If I'm going too quickly here, yell at me. Um, questions are, I'm, gonna, I'm seeing that um, Travel Donner, uh, Droner says a question. There is a link in the um, description where you can post questions to a form so I don't miss anything you say in the live chat. And I'm going to go through each one of those questions and make sure I answer them, okay? So, uh, Ed, if you want to grab that link from the description and post it, you can do that. Um, but make sure you put your questions there so I don't miss them because I don't want to. So back on this, we have the very first section of footage that zooms in. I'm going to scroll just by grabbing the playhead and pulling it. Another neat trick you can do if you grab this playhead and just pull it, it'll just show you what's going on. I'm left-clicking, holding, and pulling it. It zooms into Cadillac Lounge. It stays here through this whole footage. But now I've separated another section, right? I put a splice right here. Let's go to that one, right-click on it, and hit Crop and Zoom. Now, just like before, it's still already preset to Cadillac Lounge, right? Because we did that right off the bat. Thank you for that dropping that link yet. I appreciate it. But let's say from the Cadillac Lounge, we want to go to something else. Let's say right down here, do you see where the front window says live bands? Let's hit pan and zoom. That'll open up our windows, right? Start is at the Cadillac Lounge. Let's, let's left click on this end screen. Every time we click, it'll activate the other one. If you make a mistake, just hit cancel down on the right and then open up the crop and zoom feature again. I've done that so many times, man. I have, like, gone to, like, do something, and I totally blow this, and I'm like, well, I moved it. Oh, I put the Cadillac Lounge. I got it. I just messed it up. Just hit cancel, all right? And then open it again, and it'll be right back where it was. As long as you don't hit OK, it won't confirm it. And even if you did hit OK, hold the Control button, hit Z, and it'll undo your last maneuver, all right? So always make sure that you have the ability to go backwards and fix something if you make a mistake. I, I make so many mistakes, I, I have lost count. <laughs> I've literally lost count. All right, so we're right here at the Cadillac Lounge, and let's hit up to the pan and zoom feature, and we want to zoom down to where it says live band. So let's click inside of the end screen, this one window that allows us to where our zoom is going to go to, and let's zoom in on that front window where it says live bands. All right? And then we'll hit... Okay, so now what we have is a beginning section that zooms in on the Cadillac Lounge. It stays there for a minute, and now the next section goes from the Cadillac Lounge and heads down towards that band window. Live bands, right? Pretty cool, right? Now we're starting to move around the screen, right? This is pretty cool. I want to show you one other thing we can do here to really keep going. A lot of times I'll start doing something and go, that was cool, but I want to keep going. If I left click on that last piece of footage and grab the end, I can stretch it out. I can go as far as I want. I can take that. I can keep shortening the window here. Right underneath the preview window, you will see this little slide bar, plus and minus, that will allow me to um, extend and um, contract the amount of the view window. So I can take this as long as I want it. And it takes that one picture and just keeps extending it for as long as I need it to be. I don't need this much. I'm just showing you how to do that. But let's go back. I can also do that by left-clicking up in the timeline where all the actual timeline is by the playhead and holding and stretching. Let me slide back a bit. So we zoomed in over here. We got up to that Cadillac Lounge, and then we got to the Cadillac Lounge. It started zooming down towards that live band window. 
The problem is the longer I stretch this last piece of footage, the slower the zoom is. I just wanted to go down to that live band window and hang there for a minute, right? Super, super cool stuff. Farm All Fanatic, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate the $2 super chat. Um, so what I'll do here is let's say I wanted to quickly get down to that front window. Remember, where you put the slice is what is going to create the next tra uh, transition or change. So right now it's zooming down towards this um, live bands window, but it's, it's doing that over the entire course of this last section right here, right? And I don't want it to do that. I just want it to go quickly. So I'll pick a spot where I say I want it to end at that window, that live band front window, put another splice. I use that scissor tool, put another splice. You can also right click um, and you can also split it that way if you want to and insert um, a, a incision there. But the, that little scissor tool is usually the fastest way to do it. It's what I'm used to doing. So we've got a splice here. So what happens is it's now zooming down towards that front display window. Here's the problem. This piece of footage here that I just clipped and the piece of footage after it have the exact same set of instructions. Right? So this one here, if I open it up, if I right click and look at what the crop and zoom instructions are, it's telling it start at the Cadillac Lounge and go down to the end at that front window. Right? Let's just cancel. That's all set. But because I split it, it decided to do that right in that short section. But the next piece also has the same set of instructions. So it would go through this. If I just let this run, it would go from this first section go down, hit the front display window, and jump back up to the Cadillac Lounge again. Like, well, we didn't want that. Here's some of the tricks that you needed to learn. This is super important. Right click on this section. Let's go back to crop, crop and zoom, or crap and zoom. The la this long chunk, right? This is where we really start learning how to move things around. We know we wanted to actually, for this last section, it already got to the front window. We wanted to hang there for a minute and maybe move somewhere else. So what you want to do is take this start window and bring it down and line it directly up with this other one. This gets real tricky sometimes. If you watch this little center line, if you see it's got like a little green arrow that tells you you got to go to the right, you got to go to the left. When you, when you nail it, the two arrows align. I mean, the two plus signs, the very center. Can you see that? There's no longer any green arrows telling you move to the right, move to the left. It's aligned to the very center. So the two centers of these frames are the same. If I click OK, basically what I've done is I actually have a crop and zoom feature going on here, but I've told it to hang in the exact same place, right? So it's moving down, and then when it gets there, it just stays there because it doesn't know any better. We've told it not to move. We've told it the end point and the start point are exactly the same. So from the very beginning, if I show you this, we started full screen, we zoomed up to Cadillac Lounge, then we moved down to the front display window, and we're staying there. How cool is that, right? That's how you do it. Now, anywhere in here, you can decide, okay, well, this long section is where we're hanging on the front window. Let's splice that one more time, and then we can take that second section, right click on the crop and zoom, it's gonna tell us the same thing. It thinks it's hanging on the front window because once we split it, these two sections have the same set of pan and zoom instructions. So we wanna go, let's say we wanna go back out to the full screen again. This is where it gets tricky. See, I've got the start and the end window stacked. Click right in the middle and you'll see down in the lower left, it switches, the end screen turns green. If you look, there's a little word right there. It says end, if I click inside the middle, now the start is illuminated. Whatever the one that is green is the one you're affecting. Um, all about sports. Hello from India. Hey, glad to have you in the house. I appreciate that. Good to see you here. Let's go to the end screen. We're going to click inside till end is highlighted. And let's pull that out and stretch it out so it goes all the way back to full screen. Okay? So now this set of instructions right here on the last section tell this to go from the last point all the way out to full screen again. So what this is gonna do, if you followed along, we started full screen, we zoomed into the Cadillac Lounge in the first section, we hung at the Cadillac Lounge, we went from the Cadillac Lounge down to the front window where we hung, and then in this last piece, we said let's pan back out, 
Let's zoom out and go to full screen again. This is exactly what I do when I'm creating my tutorials and I'm showing you this section of Fillmore, the lower left, the upper right. This is how I create those effects. This is how I move around the screen. And this is how you can do it in anything that you're working on so that you can get that real super smooth fluid flow that makes sense to you guys and you have the ability to get around that entire screen. Uh, let me switch back over here so I can see your smiling faces. <laughs> Did that make sense, guys? Is that something that you guys have tried to work on before and has been a little jumbled? I think of it like a chase game. Fillmore is giving you two windows, start window and end window. And your whole goal is to figure out where you're going to put the start, where you're going to put the end, and Fillmore will make the connection between the two, no matter how big they are, that's the crop, or how small they are. So you want to get from start to end, and then you want to figure out from that end point if you're going to hang there, or if you're going to move to another place. And that's your, make your, in your next clip, make your end your new start point, and then go to your new end point. So it's like here, chase to here, catch up, chase to here. And that's just a chase game. It's just chasing around your screen so that all of that starts flowing around. You've seen, you've seen me do this with my tutorials, where I go up to the left and I show you where like a, the transitions thing you got to click on. I'll zoom up there, and I'll zoom into that and show you. But then I'll zoom back out to full screen again. That's what it is. That's all it is. Does that make sense? UK, here we grow. Tony, good to see you, my friend. Val says, that makes sense. Great explanation. Good. I hope that made sense. Brian's Thailand. I hope I explained that well. I use that one all the time. And it's so good with the thing, when you take a very still image, you can take a single image like that and bring it to life. Because you start zooming around, right? You start moving around, bringing it in, chasing it around. And you can have a very still image that you took and bring it to life because all sorts of things start to feel like a still image is now moving. Super, super, super important. <laughs> Christina, good to see you. I know you're working right now. She's like, I'm, I'm on like coffee break. Don't tell anybody. Christina loves to read, Satina. <laughs> I'll see you later on. Um, let me look at some of the questions we've got going on in here. I've got 22 responses to questions. Let's get to them. Enough of my banter. Let's talk about what you want to talk about. Uh, let's see. The summary. Let's start with. The very first question I have is from the James Walker Show. Uh, let me go to individual so I can see this. I'm running two screens here. Um, the very first question James Walker asked was, do you know when the update for Fillmore and 9 will come out? I'm still having issues with lag and playback. I followed your advice to fix it. James, there is a thing that's going on that it, we're working through. We're working through. We're as creators. Fillmore keeps bringing us updates. And some of these lags, uh, the new updates have fixed some of the lag issues. The one thing that I want to make sure that all of you are aware of is make sure that you have the, the um, latest update installed on your computer. If you go up into Filmora and hit the Help tab, you can check to make sure. If you it'll say click to make sure you have the, the most recent update, and it'll tell you if you do. The other thing I want you to do is in the description of this live stream, I have linked the tech specs for what your computer system should have in order to run Filmora 9 properly. Okay, So what I want you to do is take a peek, click on that at some point. You don't need to do it now. You pay attention to me. I'm the guy. I'm the. I need you here. Um, but when we're done, you can click on that and see what Filmora recommends you you should have for uh, your basic system specs in your computer, and make sure that your computer is up to speed to run Filmora properly. Now, I also do have a lag fix video on my channel that helps you walk through some of the things that can reduce the lag, um, some of the features, keeping your GPU acceleration on, and being and using some smaller. Um, playback of half screen sizes so that it's not full resolution. You know, that little preview window up in the corner, when you have that at full resolution, Filmora has to work harder to do the thing you're asking it to do. Um, and also, when you start stacking a lot of effects, when you ask Filmora to do a lot of things, what happens is, with any video editor, not just Filmora, the more you ask your Filmora editor to do, the harder your computer has to work to do those things. The more effects you add, the more features you're using at one time. When your project starts looking like a stamp collection because there's so many little things all over it that you have going on, that's what mine look like. 
it makes your computer work harder. So you have to keep that in mind that you're asking your computer to do more. Simple edits usually are easier for Filmora to, ha to handle or any editing software. Harder edits are just gonna require more CPU, that's your central processor unit, and your GPU, your graphics card that's working really hard to make that all happen. Um, but there is a new update. I'm, I've, I'm testing the beta version of it in the research group for, Fil for Filmora. It is due to come out, they said, end of the summer. Now, that's not concrete. That's what they've said. Um, I'm testing some of the features. I can't tell you about what's in it. Part of being able to test is I have to, I'm sworn to secrecy and I can't tell you about the new things because some will end up and some won't end up based on the input that we all give them. But I want you guys to know that I'm there telling them like, nah, that sucks. Fix that. <laughs> Don't do that one. Whether they listen or not, we'll see. But end of the summer, which is going to come quick. We're in, uh, we're in June now. Um, figure another probably, you know, August, September in there, we should start hearing about this new one that hopefully brings back a lot of the things we like. You know what I'm talking about. So keep your eyes out. Uh, one of the other questions we have right now, question number two, uh, let me move forward. Question number two comes from my pal, the man with the hat in Filmora eight. I had the facility to make the facility, the facility. I had the ability to make new folders and add photos, video, music templates. This made it easy, easy to drag them into new videos. But version 9 doesn't have this feature. And if I create new folders on the left and then create a new video, the folders vanish. I know exactly. Am I missing something, he asks? I know exactly what you're talking about. Let me show you all how to do this. Uh, I'll share my screen again. Let me send this over. So this is the thing. When we're looking at Filmora, in the upper left, you will see if we're clicked on media, that's where we bring all of our pieces in, our images, our video clips, our music. In, at the very bottom of that, you will see there's two folders here. In, it's a folder plus and a folder minus. If you click on the folder plus, up in the upper left, you'll see highlighted in blue, it adds a new folder. Now you can even change the name of that folder. It's highlighted in blue. I could call this, let's say I was planning to bring in a lot of audio. I could name this uh, audio if I knew how to spell audio. And now I would have the audio folder. And I could add another folder by going down and clicking on folder again in that same column at the bottom. And maybe this one's gonna be um, you know, images. And I could name it images. And then I create all these folders. And any one of these I click on and highlight, I can also delete by clicking the folder to the right in that column. It will give me the option, do you want to delete this selected folder? Yes, and it removes it. What you want to do, let's say this, this is my standard operating, um, I'm going to eliminate this, guys. I'm just going to delete all these files so it cleans up my screen. Th let's say this is my standard project. And let's say in every project I know, like I'm making a YouTube tutorial video and I'm covering Filmora and I always know that I'm going to use my intro. Right now I've got pictures up here, but let's say I always use certain music, certain intro stuff, certain video clips that always end up in my end screens. What you want to do is build that basic pattern, build these folders, add your folders, put in, name them, music, images, video, do your basic build out and then up in file, click on file. And then all you want to do, oh, excuse me. All you want to do is save that, save project as, and then just name it something. Name it your, name it your starting point, your beginning setup. You know, pick a name that you always know. That's, that's your basic setup where, that controls and saves all your files for things that you always use in multiple videos. I always use like my CTA that says, you know, uh, you know hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell uh, to stay part of the conversation. And I'll, I can set that all up. So whenever I open up my basic, basic Filmora tutorial, it has all those particular things in it. So that's what you do there, my friend. That's the way you'd handle that. Let me see what I, I hope I answered that question properly. I don't know if you're in the chat today. Um, let me uh, see what the next question is. <laughs> is that Nick Nimmin? Nick Nimmin in the live stream. Uh, great to see you, my man. He is the best. Listen, I'm going to change subjects for a second here. If you are looking to grow your YouTube channel and learn more about how to do well on YouTube and you haven't subscribed to Nick, please, please click over to his channel and subscribe right now. He's the guy who got me to where I am. He and Brian G. Johnson. I didn't learn about Brian G. Johnson until Nick Nimmin told me about him. What do you think about that? 
Um, one of the next questions on the list, let me see what we have. Uh, number two. Number three. Uh, from Owen Video. Still can't believe that you have a child, man. Yes, I do have a son. And he's a teenager. That's what I can't believe. Uh, anyhow, give me some pointers on what n- new phone I should buy. Well, that's clear. You should buy the Motorola flip phone and make sure it has no ability to take pictures or stream video. Uh, question number three, number four. Question number four is uh, from Val. Val, oh, I wanted some help on overlay. Let me read this correctly. I wanted some help on overlay. Separate video track with green screen minimizing minimizing the subject in the video. Thank you. All right, let me see if I can interpret what you mean. Val, I'm assuming you're meaning that you wanted to be able to overlay an image using the green screen on a separate track and then have the main subject be able to minimize it or go smaller. I don't know if that's exactly what you asked, but that's how I'm interpreting it right now. Um, So what I'm going to do is let me share my screen uh, and get into Filmora and show you what I think you're asking. I hope you are. So here's Filmora. Uh, I've got a few pieces in here. Let me bring in, let me import some stuff. I think I have a, I think I have some green screen pieces. All right. This is going to be a quick, a quick showing you how to use the chroma key or green screen. Uh, this is one I use a ton. I use a ton. I gave away a free subscribe button that you could overlay that had a black background screen, but you had to eliminate the black. This is exactly the same thing. Let's say you have that same picture of this building scenario, right? This is a, this is something that is in your main screen. I'm going to bring that down. This is your main track, track number one. Let's, uh, let me stretch it out, not move it all over the place. Let's say I wanted to overlay a face, right? Here's this dude. I pulled this off of Pixabay. I bring him down into the track above, but he's all you see. You see how he takes over the whole screen? Here's a quick trick I'm going to show you. Right click on him, crop to fit from the drop down. Boom, he fits. No more black lines. If you noticed, if I put him right in there the way he was, he would have had spaces on either side of him. Uh, and that's not cool. Sometimes you want to make sure how to quickly figure out how to get it to fit the screen. Crop to fit, great way to do that. Now, if I put him over and I want to have him sitting with that background through, what I want to do is I want to double left click on that top layer, that dude with the baseball hat with the green background. I want to go to the upper left, and you see this chroma key? I'm going to activate it by putting a check in that box, and it's already actually preset to green, so it starts disappearing right away. If you click on that eyedropper, bring it over, it'll select and put it in that green area right over here. It'll select the exact green and remove it. Now, you can dial in things like the offset and the feather to get that really perfect so that it shows through the way you want it. And it gets the edges around the individual just the way you want them to. Edge thickness, edge feather. And you can really dial this dude in so it kind of looks like he's sitting where he is. But what I think Val might have been asking is how can I, like, readjust this person? He's kind of, I want to be able to resize it or minimize it. Down in the lower left next to the main track, that background Cadillac lounge footage, you'll see a little bit, a little button there. It's a lock. I want to click on that. It's a lock and an eyeball. The eyeball shuts that particular track off. The lock locks it in place. So when I go back up to the preview window, I can left click on this and then I can resize this dude, right? I can just left click and hold and I can drag him around. Maybe I just need him down in the corner, right? Boom. Now I can have all that happen and little frowny guy, I don't know why he's mad. He's probably mad because of the way he's dressed. I don't know who dressed him that way. If my mom dressed me that way, I'd I'd probably have that face on too. But now you can minimize him and move that around. But you always want to make sure that you lock that main screen or if you have multiple tracks and you just want to move one, lock them down in that timeline in the lower left at the beginning of each track. there's There's a lock button and an eyeball button. Eyeball makes you see it. So if I hit the eyeball... The background screen, like I just clicked the eyeball off for that main footage of the Cadillac Lounge, it shut it off. That will not appear in my preview, and it will not appear in my export. So if I had an audio track, too, that I didn't want to hear, I could shut it off, mute it that way. I turn it back on, there it is. But if you have multiple tracks, that's how you want to resize. Keep the one that you want to move unlocked and the one you don't want to move locked. Because what you don't want to do is accidentally have them both unlocked, click up in the screen, and all of a sudden you accidentally move the background 
and you you didn't even realize you did it, and then you export, and something is way out of sync because you're all of a sudden your Cadillac lounge footage is like it's all twisted over to the side. All right, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Sometimes that makes sense, not often. <laughs> Uh, let's go back to our question second. Uh, let's see. Flash in the pan was a white knuckle drive home. Three and a half hour drive turned into a five and a half hour drive. Ed, I don't know what's going on in your life over there, but buddy, well, you got to slow it down. You got to stay closer to home. <laughs> All right, listen. So the next question, let's hit the next question over here. Thank you. Val, did, I saw, thank you so much, Daniel. Val, I hope that answered your question. Um, if it didn't, um, let me know in any of the comments to this later on, and I'll go back and I'll make sure that I hook up with you and I, and I get that described properly. All right. Made sense. Perfect. Thank you, Nick. The next question on our list is question number five from <laughs> Chicks with Dixon. I love that name. Nick, I'm going to get demonetized right just from that name. <laughs> Is there a better way to use noise reduction? The one on Filmora makes you sound like you're a robot. Agreed. Agreed. Um, if you guys don't know where the um, noise reduction feature is, let me click back over here really quickly, and I'll show you. If you do have an audio track in, uh, I don't actually have any in here. Let me pull one in really quickly so that, um, that you guys can see what I'm talking about. There is a noise reduction feature uh, in Filmora. And it's not only Filmora, it's almost any software has different noise reduction features. And what it tries to do is it tries to squelch some of those sounds that may be permeating your audio track. Like if there's background noise or hissing or popping, it tries to sort of EQ and, and duck those frequencies out. But what happens is when it does that, it doesn't do it. No, There's only a few higher end softwares that do it really well. In Premiere Pro, it's got a much better feature. It's got a few plugins that they use. I do my audio all through a different software, a digital audio workstation, DAW. And I take my audio out, I fix it, and then I bring it back in and I sync it up. There's just not a great way of, of doing it in Filmora. It works. It's just not the best feature. It's designed that if you have... Um, if you have some sort of a noise, you can um, you can remove it to a certain degree. Does that you know what I mean? It just it's good for tweaking the ro this rolling off a little bit. Let me show you my screen capture here, so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, let's get rid of uh, crazy cap guy. <laughs> he's cute. Not that, you know, I'm sure I'm sure he's sad for a reason. I just don't want to deal with it right now. I brought in some audio here. I'm going to take this audio track and bring it down into Filmora. All right. Now, anything you bring into Filmora, if you want to access the advanced features, you just have to double left click on them down in your timeline. And in the upper left, it always opens up the higher features, the more detailed things that you can do. So that's what's great about Filmora. It makes it so simple. Anything in your timeline, double left click on it. And up in the left, you get the more detailed features that you can go in depth. And if you see right here in the upper left, you'll see that denoise. You can hit the little box, tick that, remove background noise, and you can apply how much of that you want on, weak, mid, or strong. In some circumstances, the weak kind of works, and you hit OK, and it would then do that. It's all right for some, but I would, I'm going to honestly tell you that I just don't love it. I don't think it's a great, I don't think they have that feature completely worked out it's good for certain circumstances and if it works great if it doesn't you're better off going into the eq and trying to deal with it that way uh, and the way you can do that uh let me get you switched over here is if you double left click again on your audio and see right here where it says equalizer you can click on customize and it'll open up a, I believe this is a 10 band or an eight band, one, two, three, count for me. You can actually find the frequencies that are really obnoxious by cranking them up. Grab one of the EQs and if you, like if it's a hiss, a lot of times you can grab one of the upper frequencies and pop it and push it up. And when you hear it get really annoying, you know if that's a, that's a bad frequency. And then you can duck it down slightly and pull out like a hiss by pulling out some of the higher end stuff. Or if there's a rumble, sometimes you get a background rumble. I've had noise in the background, especially low frequencies. 
this 3163, your voice doesn't even occupy those frequencies. These are frequencies that, you know, you hear that car going by you down the street that has the bass thumping. That's these lower frequencies. In most voiceovers, when you hear rumbling, you can pull these almost all the way out. I dial these way back down. It's not till about the 125 range that your voice creates those low tones. The rest you can, wrote, you can pull rumble out that way easily using that custom equalize feature. And then hit OK. And if you ever needed to get back to it, you can just use this drop line. Let's say you had a separate piece of audio. You can just do the drop down and click on custom, and it'll automatically pull up that same customized EQ for a different piece of audio. It saves it in there within the project you're working on. That's a, that's a big savings for me. A lot of times I'll dial in a mic, like I'll do something live. Um, I did a bunch of stuff when uh, Nick and I were out at the Two Buddy house at the uh, Clamor Summit. We had filmed a bunch of stuff. Brian was there, Andrew Can. We filmed a bunch of stuff, but the mics were all different we were using, and I brought them back home. Some were lavaliers, some were shotgun mics, and I had to EQ that stuff. So I would set an EQ for the footage on one piece of the audio, and then I could apply it to different clips that I got sent. I'm like, oh, I know it worked here. It'll work over there, too. I just saved it. Perfect. Ready to go. Love that feature. Uh, let me see what else we got. Quest Jones. Have I missed anything in the chat? Uh, Heidi, Costum CO. Good to see you. Heidi's a, uh, a pal of ours. Jeremiah, <laughs> J3B, another pal of ours. Love you guys. So many people I know here. Corinne. Yeah, I think I called you Corinne last time. Corinne. Is that me? Am I saying that right? Cosmetically Corinne? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and I'll find out if that's correct. Um, check it media. <laughs> All right, so let me show you this one. Uh, let me see. Next question. Uh, I've got number six. We're on 28 questions. I unfortunately promoted most of my earlier videos when I realized that was a mistake. It was already a little bit late. I'm un unable to understand the real traffic from my channel. And sadly, I'm, able to, I'm not able to pull more than 200 views. This is a YouTube question. I'm going to stick with Filmora today, but I'm going to hang on to this question and I will deal with this one in our next YouTube live stream. Next question. Aiden, uh, Aiden and Jimmy, how do you do color grading? How do I do color grading? This is a good question. How many of you guys are using the color grade feature in Fillmore? If you're using color grading, uh, give me a hashtag color in the chat. Hashtag color if you're using the color grading. I use the color grading as much as I use the pan and zoom features. I color grade everything. I love it. I love the color grade options in Fillmore. I think they're fantastic. Corinne, smiley face. Good, I said it right. Let me share my screen. I want to show you quickly how you do some color grading and how you can adjust the way your footage looks. A lot of people are... I started filming on my phone. I was filming on a Samsung Galaxy S6. It was like a four-year-old phone. The highest performing video on this channel was filmed on a Samsung Galaxy S6 with a crack in the screen. And it, and it still drives 800 to 1,000 views a day. What does that tell you? What does that tell you, right? It's not necessarily what you film with. It's how you create that content, how you can work with what you have. But the way I did that, let me do screen capture here again. I'm going to send back over to the uh, Phil Moore screen. If you have a piece of footage that you bring down in, let's start with uh, something different. I'm going to go with this eyeball. <laughs> Here's this lady's eyeball. I have no idea who she is, but she has an eyeball. Um... The trick I just taught you, can you see up in this preview window in the right, do you see how there's two big black lines, one to the left and one to the right? Because this picture isn't a perfect 16 by 9. Or So what I can do is I can right-click on this, and I can hit Crop to Fit. Boom. Now it fits my screen perfectly for 16 by 9. Simple. Easy. I like simple and easy. Uh, for color grading, you want to double left click. When, like I said, anything down in your timeline, if you double left click on it, it opens up options, right? So in this case, we want to talk about color grading. Go up to the top left and see what starts with the image tab. Go to color. And then if you really want to do some color grading, click on advanced. Man, this really opens up a world of possibilities for you. First of all, you can sit in here. This, this histogram, that's what they call this upper section, histogram, tells you where your blues and greens and reds align. 
and where they're strong in the lower frequency and the darker frequencies or the brighter spectrum uh, sections of the spectrum. You can change that. See how they all move as I change the temperature and I push down towards the blue. You see the histogram change and blue comes forward. Really cool color grading here. Like maybe I look at this and it's right where it started and it's telling me in the histogram red's a little bit ahead. Green's in the middle, blue's a little back. If I want to balance this out a little, I can actually dial it back and say, let me get the red, green, and blue to align a little. That's more like a white balance where the colors are a little more even. So even if you didn't have like a uh, reference white, I use a lot of times I'll use like a, a white screen so that I can actually get my white balance or a gray card or white card. This is a good way to do it is to balance out your greens and reds and blues. And then you can change the tint too as well. That'll throw it different ways. You can go uh, more purple. You can go more green. But that's a cool way to immediately start dialing in what you want. Now, you can see automatically that it was pretty red when I started, right? And this one, I balanced it more towards a basic white where her flesh isn't quite as red. Um, but down below it, you have all these options. I'm going to get deeper into this at a different point. But LUTs, this first drop down is LUTs. These are all preset um, entire color gradings that, that Filmora gives you to make it look like the movies we've grown up to, right? Like if you wanted this to look like a 007 film, a James Bond film, hit 007 series and it uses that kind of color grading. You can use Batman. You can get more like a Batman color grading. Um, Gravity, which was the film with uh, Sarah, Sandra, help me, <laughs> the one in space, you can use that color grading one. It goes all the way down to Sparta, Star Wars, gives you some of that vintage look. You can really get some really cool, quick preset options. This is the my favorite thing I use in here is the B&W, black and white film. Whenever I have a piece of footage and I just want to quickly make it look like black and white, I click on the black and white LUT, boom, there's my black and white film. Now I can tweak it. You can get into the light and you can change the highlights and you can change the shadows. This is something I'm going to go more in depth with. But here is where all your color exists. This is where you do color grading. This is where you can decide to um, take out individual colors, right? When I go down to the HSL, like if I see her eyes are really blue, I can click on that blue and I can start pulling out that saturation and I can dial back a lot of the luminance and hue of that blue. I can, you just dial in what you want. I've changed things. See, I can slowly find that blue and make her look a little less pronounced in those eyes. Now they're looking more green. I can go over to the green and I can push the green up. Now her eyes are kind of a grayish color. Can you see that comparison? It starts picking individual colors in your footage and you can adjust them. Very, very, very cool. I love the color um, uh, adjustment ability of Filmora. Um, so I will get into that more. I promise I will do a video that really digs deep into how to do those kind of color adjustments because I love doing that. I think that's one of the things that makes Filmora stand out is the ability to really get in there and tweak your footage because sometimes I get really crappy footage that comes out of a phone. I'll be out and I'll have my iPhone or whatever phone I have now and I'll film something and I'll bring it back in and I'll go like, wow, that looks pretty rough. I got to change the lighting. I got to change the color. I can use the LUTs and I can make that simple film footage that came from my phone look like something really cinematic just by tweaking some of the adjustments I can do in Filmora. It's pretty cool. Uh, you need a Filmora course, Nick Nimmin. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I'm thinking about putting one out at some point. There's so many things that we talk about. At some point, there may be an actual course. I'd like to do a really cheap course for you guys that's like $19.99 that just does hours of walking through from start to finish to really show you things so that you'd have it all right there and ready to uh, learn all these different pieces and have the ability to get in touch with me personally and ask questions along the way. That may be in the works. Uh, next question here. I hope that that uh, Adi and Jimmy, I will go deeper into that. I hope that answered uh, some of your ideas on how to do some of the basic color grading. That's where your options are. Uh, Brian's Thailand. How long should I make an intro and how is the best way to make it catchy? Thanks, Daniel. This is one of those ones that borders on YouTube and uh, Filmora. I'll take it. I do have a video up that um, on the channel that shows you how to make an intro using letters and see-through and stuff. I will tell you this. When it comes to putting anything in your content, the length of the things you use is totally dependent on whether your audience is enjoying it. Period. Period. 
Because what you want to do is bring people to the platform, get them watching, keep them watching. So when you're putting your structure of your video together, it's really, you get that urge, like, I can make a really cool intro, and you make this 15-second intro, but then you look back and you look at your analytics from YouTube and everybody tuned away. Don't make long intros. Intros are cool, but I prefer you to make something short, like a CTA, a call to action. So instead of this really fancy intro, have something quick that goes, you know, you show, you get right to the content, but it quickly might say, hey, don't forget to hit the, you know, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Boom, done, like two and a half seconds, right? Make that cool. Because if you can build a really cool CTA just to remind people who haven't subscribed that they might want to, but it doesn't annoy the people who have already come to your channel and they go, yeah, I'm already subscribed. How many times are you going to say that, Toby? I heard you the first 90 times. So long intros, use your analytics and see what it shows you. But in terms of, in general, I think a shorter intro. So when you're putting together your intros, make them quick, make them snappy. And if you can have a call to action, a CTA, try to do that instead rather than just showing your logo. It's cool for branding. It's kind of neat. It doesn't necessarily get someone to remind them to subscribe because people will always forget to do the thing that you think that they would remember. Like right now, how many of you have clicked the like button on this video stream? I bet you if I counted how many people are in here and how many likes this stream has, I've got 81 people in here. I got 77 likes. I got to show you guys some love. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. I don't have any dislikes. <laughs> which is good, I guess. But that means that some of you that haven't hit the like button yet. And if you were liking what you saw, you'd be like, oh, okay, I hit the like button. Do you know how many times I've been in a Nick Nimmin stream and it's not until someone reminds me to, to tell them that I liked it and hit the like button? I go to his streams all the time. I go to these streams and I forget because sometimes you're just so in, into what's being talked about and it's so fun and you're in the chat. You're like, oh, I forgot to hit the like button. I forgot to subscribe. I forgot to hit the bell notification. So it's always good to use that little intro sections to remind people, hey, if you like what you're seeing, hit the bell. Subscribe. Hang around. There'll be more. Uh, ask Daniel a question. What number are we on now? Oh, my gosh. I'm on eight of 32. Number nine. Devendra. 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 How to do bump effect during fight scene like Superman's latest movie man of steel you don't really expect me to cover that all right now do you <laughs> some of these questions i'm going to take and i'm going to put them into my idea bin i have a whole list of things that's a great idea that bump effect is really cool um and i would like to see if i can cover that but to try to show it right now would be an entire process so devendra i'm going to put that into my list of filmora ideas and i'm going to see if i can work that into an upcoming video where i can really spend some time on that all right but thank you for your question. Uh, question number 10 from Mark. Daniel, I love your videos. I'm trying to make a video where I resize the image of myself to create the illusion of a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. Can this be done? Boom. I think I just covered this. If you go back and look how I did the green screen effect, I was showing um, Val how to do that. Exact same thing. Film yourself in front of a green screen. Right now I have a black, um, these, these industry things that are they're light darkening curtains get a green screen film yourself in front of it dress up as a devil you might want to close the window shades so that your neighbors don't see you doing that but do the you know whatever do the devil do two takes of you one being the devil one being the angel and if they're green screened all you have to do is bring those each one in in a track above your main screen like if this is my main screen i can bring a track in of each one green screen, eliminate the green and shrink them up in the preview window, just like I showed Val and stick you on my, stick you right up, stick yourself right on your own shoulders. Right. Does that make sense? Real simple. That's why I say that green screen is so important. If you learn how to do it, it allows all these other things to happen. I'm going to put that one also into a future bin. That's a really great question. I might have to come back and do a video about that. And if I do, I'll shut you out, Mark. That's a really good question. Uh, number 11. Nintendo Gamer 101, how can you zoom into one part of a video you're using? I think I just covered that too. So, uh, like, is there one part of the video you want to zoom into and you still want the video to keep playing? Zoom into that object. How do you do that? First section of this playlist, of this playlist, of this live stream, I showed exactly how to shoot around the screen, hang in an area, move to the next. So, definitely beginning. I hope I answered your question. If, if I didn't, uh, replay in the replay, make sure you check out the beginning of this live stream. We went kind of into depth with that. Really important, that crop and zoom and hanging, learning how to move around your screen. Really, it's so important. Great question, too, by the way. Question number 12. How you guys doing? In the, uh, my question. How you guys doing in the chat? 
You all right? Everybody okay? <laughs> It's good to see so many of you here. I got to say, I've got 76, it says right now, watching. If I start to bore you, tell me, like, Daniel, shut up. Get on to the next thing. <laughs> I'll do what I can. It's, it's great to see you here. I'm so excited that so many of you want to learn more about Filmora. And I'm going to try to schedule these streams so that they don't pop up like the way they did. Um, if you guys have ideas about when the best day or time, Eastern Standard Time, we're all in different time zones. To watch a live stream, let me know. Drop them in the comments, uh, into the chat or in the comments, because I, I tend to watch the replays to see what you guys have said that I might have missed. And we'll see if we can figure out the best time that a Filmora tutorial live stream um, might work best so that you can all be here and ask questions. I know there's not always one perfect time, but we'll shoot for whatever is best. Um, Swathi, is it possible to create animated bar chart race time or animated map that captures race time using Filmora? I did two videos, one on the time code. I used the, uh, one was the map. I showed how to actually do the lines and move the lines across the screen. And one I did with putting a timer up. It's the exact same thing. If you're trying to figure out a race time, there's a timer video, um, how to insert a timer that's right on my homepage in my Filmora... Uh, I'll tell you which playlist it's in right now. It's in the playlist. Uh, I think it's in Filmora Effects. But it's right on my homepage. Go to the Filmora Effects playlist, and you'll see. It's either that or Filmora 9. And you'll be able to see how to insert an overlay timer uh, so you can do exactly that. Let's see. Next question. Question number 13. This is unlucky. Mario Van Collen Productions, what, is your what was your first editing software, and can you animate 3D models in Filmora? You cannot do 3D motion turning in Filmora. Does not do it. It doesn't do motion capture in that way. My first editing software that I ever used was Windows Movie Maker. I think everyone started there, if you were a PC guy. Because I think it's iMovie if you were a Mac person and if you were a pc person it was probably movie maker so i did movie maker first um if i was going to get very old school i my dad used to work for polaroid and i used to use products before there was even internet so i go way back video editing to polar vision way before your time but uh yeah on computers that was iMovie was my favorite i then moved on to um lightworks which is very similar to all of the premieres and um, Re Da Vinci Resolve and HitFilm, kind of that layout, similar to Filmora Pro. Uh, and then from there, I spent time in Blender. If you're looking to do 3D modeling, Blender is an amazing program. Free. It is a free to use. Very high learning curve, though. You're going to have to spend a lot of time with it to really learn it. But it does amazing animation. Blender. Check that one out. Next question, number 14. It says, uh, <clears throat> from D, and it says, why is Nick Nimmin so handsome? No, it doesn't say that. I totally made that up. That's a lie. Uh, it's from Brad. Why can't I speed up or slow down a section of a video without deleting the video that's behind it? Here's the deal. I can show you that. Uh, let's go back to screen capture. And let me cross over so I can show you what I'm working on. If you have a section of footage that you're working on, right? Let's call it, this is just an eyeball. This is just an image, but it works exactly the same when you're working with footage. And let's cut this into a few pieces so that it, uh, it represents several different things. Pretend these are different sections of footage. If you tried to grab one section and right-clicked and went up to duration and tried to change the, uh, sorry, I'm doing that wrong. It's actually... Uh, yeah, it should be. That won't let me do it because you know what it is. Well, let me let me say that again. It only lets me do duration for an image. If I'm using a piece of video, I have to bring in a piece of video for this. Hang on one second, and I'll show you uh, a little bit better. Blooper reel bounce. I'm going to eliminate everything from my timeline, and I'm going to bring down this blooper reel. If I have some sections here. And I'm going to cut them up because they're video. I want to make sure I do this with video so you understand. So here's three sections of video. This middle section, right? Let's say I right-click and speed and duration. When it's video, it shows you speed and duration. If I right-clicked on that, and let's say I tried to increase the speed, 
I can zoom that up and hit OK. It'll let me do that. It'll shrink. If you notice right here, let me zoom in. It made it shrink down to a tiny spot because it was sandwiched in between here and it had enough room to let me shrink it. But I will undo by hitting Control, holding Control and the Z button on my keyboard. If I tried to change the speed and duration and make it slower, which would make it longer, it'll fight me. See how it doesn't want to do any of that? And if you do that, sometimes it can actually, depending on the system, give you problems with the other footage around it. Every time you try to change the speed and duration, it says, well, look, at I want to go slower. I'll set it down. Nope, it won't let me, because it would mean that it would have to push out left or right, and these other two pieces of footage won't let it. If you want to do that, take that track, left click and hold, bring it up to the next track, okay? And then right click on it, hit speed and duration, then you can slow it down, which will make it slower and longer. Hit OK. Now see how it was, it was allowed to get longer and slower because it wasn't bumping into this next piece of footage. So if I shrink down here, now I can actually slide this other stuff out of the way, go, I think I've got the speed I want. I can put it back in place. Now it all works, right? So now I was able to change that speed using a different track to give it the room to expand and contract. Does that make sense? You guys follow that? Um, there is that weird thing where you got to give it room to breathe, right? In and out. Uh, Grabster, good to see you, my friend. Um, let's see. Next question in here. We have question number 15. I'm going to try my best to get to all of these today. Electronics, hiking, and Jesus talk. <laughs> I got to tell you, every time I use electronics, Jesus' name definitely gets mentioned. <laughs> and not always in a good way. Um, how do you sync up audio and video when the audio was recorded separately from the video? Fantastic question. Any of you guys have problems with this? I, I do this all the time. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll film something. Like I'm here in my studio and I'll actually film myself, but I'll have my mic off, just off the camera a little bit down, and I'll record it into a really decent DAW digital audio workstation where I can really capture the sound and play with it and mix it and then bring it back in. But I'll have my camera actually up there just filming from the camera mic, right? So I'll have audio in my video track and then this really good mic track. And now I have to get into Filmora and figure out how to get those two to work together. All right, let me see if I can show you how to do that. Uh, let me grab some footage here. I am going to share my screen. Let's get that screen over there. Okay, so I'm going to start by getting all this stuff out of here. Um, I'm going to import, let me see if I have some of this here that might line up. This was raw footage from that session, and I believe this should be the uh, mic mix. Perfect. Hopefully, if it wants to come in. Um, what you want to do is bring your footage down. So this is my main footage that will have audio attached to it. And all you want to do, I'm shrinking this. I'm going to cut this down here. One thing I want to point out, this is a, I have two computers running here. Do you notice this is my slower of the two? When I brought this footage down, it's like the whole footage seems to shift and move in the timeline. See, if you look to the right of it, the very end, it's still moving. That's, that's Filmora absorbing it and getting that optimized so what you can use the proxy files and get it to play smoothly. Always make sure when you bring something down into Filmora, let it finish doing its thing, all right? Give it a minute to catch up. Um, does this one, this one may not, okay. So now this is in right here. Can you see this is a video track with the audio attached that was just captured from the camera mic. But I have a separate audio track that I'm bringing down underneath it that was captured from a microphone. Now, you kind of caught me off guard. I'm not sure if these are the exact same ones they may be. What you would do in here, I can give you the example, is you want to stretch out your timeline by left clicking up on top where the numbers are up here, stretch it out. You see where the red bar is up top? Just grab left click and stretch. And if you look at your wave files, what you want to do is actually align them so that you see the two images and get them to line up. They actually form a picture. 
These two particular ones, I don't even think this is the right audio track from here, but you can see these wave files. It could be. I don't know if it is. If these line up, I would bring this over and say, okay, these peaks belong with those peaks. I get them lined up. I listen to, listening is everything. I get them till they sound pretty close. What you'll hear is like an echo, like a slapback. When they get close, because it's two audio tracks and one of them slightly out of sync, it'll start sounding like one of them is echoing, like you're talking into a delay. So what you do is you just get in, you stretch the timeline as far as you can till you're down to frame by frame. And when you can get it frame by frame, now you're moving it one frame at a time, right? You can slide this over. And you can slide it. I just turned my track down. Let me turn the volume up on that. I can slide this over one frame at a time. Again, this is probably not the exact matching track, but let's look at the beginning of each. I can slide it over one frame at a time because I've stretched this out down to one frame. And I'll get the beginning of my audio track to line up underneath the audio from the video track. And once those are lined up, then they'll probably be in sync. You can hit play and listen. If there's a little delay, then try moving it one frame back, move it one frame forward, and just make sure that they line up properly. And you'll hear it. So, But use your eyes. That's why I say I mix my audio with my eyes. I look at that beginning lump, and I go, this one, the blue one starts here, the green one starts here. Let's get those lined up. If they start at the same place, then I know the audio is in sync, right? And that's how I do it. And sometimes over the span of a video, because I'm... The, the syncing isn't always perfect. I make it halfway through and realize my audio has fallen out of sync slightly. It's a little behind or a little ahead. I'll stretch it out again and find a quiet spot, click on the audio track, hit the scissors tool, and snip it. Then I can grab it, left-click on it, and I can move it. I can actually shrink it. I can decide to send it back so it's delayed a frame or two. Or I can even decide to you know move the other track back and bring it forward so it's ahead again. And that's how I realign it, is I just move the audio track so that during the whole video, it lines up, it's in sync. You'll get a little delay, but as long as it's really close, you're good to go. And that's how you bring in that audio track and get it aligned to the audio from your camera if it was recorded from a different source. Um, let's see, where are we at? Uh, 212, let's see. Next question up here. Number 16 question. Hey, Daniel, love your Filmora and all the amazing content. If I were to switch from Premiere Pro to Filmora, is there a huge learning curve or would it be an easy transition? Thank you so much. I will tell you this. If you can use Premiere Pro, that is a beast. That is a beast of software. It's a fantastic software. It does tons of stuff. It also has a steep learning curve and it comes with a fairly hefty price tag um, and a reoccurring fee if you want to use some of the other features. The thing I've liked about Filmora is it immediately does the thing I needed to do right off the bat, right? I can get in quickly. It's got an easy learning curve. You can get into things really quickly and make them happen. The entire software was built so that people can come in and have a very uh, easy-to-use software that gives you pretty decent functionality and an easy learning curve so you can have a quick workflow, fast workflow. That's my whole thing. Look, I'm not doing rocket science here, right? I'm doing tutorials. I'm showing you some tricks. I'm not making the next, you know, Star Wars film. If I had to do that, then I would move to a different software that really had cinematic power like Adobe Premiere Pro does. But mostly I'm making videos for YouTube. A lot of you are making videos for YouTube. And why would I spend all the money every month um, and have to have that incurred fee and learning curve if I didn't need it right now? I'm a big fan of technique over tool, right? I think that it the best tool you have is the one right up in your head. So if you can see something and you have a tool that can make it happen and it's affordable and it does what you want it to do, use that tool. The minute you get to the point where that tool doesn't do the thing that you see in your head and you run into walls, move to a new tool. Simple as that. I'm, I use my daily driver is Filmora 9. I call it my daily driver because that's the one I tend to use every day. But the minute it, I get to the point where it's not doing what I need it to do in order to create the content for you guys the way I want to make it, I move to another tool. Nothing against Filmora. It's all about what's right for me as a creator, and I want you guys to use what's right for you as a creator. Okay? So that makes sense? If you come from Pr Premiere Pro, Filmora is going to be a cakewalk. 
It's real simple, really super simple layout, easy to use. Um, it doesn't use as much resources from your computer, so it won't put the burden on your computer. That's another thing when you use Premiere Pro, you real or you know even some of the other ones too, like higher end DaVinci, uh, Final Cut Pro, especially Blender, um, Lightworks. You really have to have a computer that's built to handle. Um, uh, has quite a bit of resource capability to handle those higher end softwares. So more has got a little more ease of use, a little easier on your processor and on your graphics card. That's why I use it. Um, how are we doing out there? Everyone awake? <laughs> uh, let me take a quick look at the chat right here. Uh, I'm talking so much. This is what I, you guys know this. I talk a lot, right? That's what I do. Hey, uh, Tim, nice to see you, pal. Good to see you. Uh, Pam, I said hi to Nick. Still in here? I love Nick. He's such a good guy. I'm going to be hanging out with Nick uh, in a few weeks at VidCon. If any of you guys happen to be going to VidCon, come to the TubeBuddy booth. I'll be working at the TubeBuddy booth, and come say hi to me. I'm there doing channel reviews, helping people uh, improve their channels. There's no cost. We do have a schedule. Some of them I think you may have to schedule in. You can go to TubeBuddy website and get scheduled in. It doesn't cost you anything. But always, definitely come back. Come by. Say hi. TubeBuddy booth. Shake our hands. Let's talk. All right. <laughs> and Nick and I are filming. Um, we're out there a couple of days. Or I know I'm out there early. I think Nick's coming out early, too. We're going to be filming Brian G. Johnson, uh, his 100,000 subscriber video. It's going to be killer. It's going to be killer. On Venice Beach. You know, this job isn't so bad. <laughs> uh, next question. Number 17. Uh uh, Irichu Gaming, how do you lock an image on something? How do you lock an image on something? I think I covered that uh, when you zoom in uh, and grab that screen, right? You can zoom in, crop down, pop that on it, and that will stay locked. If you're looking to lock uh, while the image is moving across the screen, that's motion capture. Filmora does not have a motion capture feature. Um, it doesn't stay focused on one thing as that moves across the screen. If it did, that would make some of the other higher functionality really cool. We're, they, they are aware of that. They know they've been asked that a lot. Maybe in the future we'll see that. I hope we do. That would be pretty cool. We could do some cool effects. Uh, number 18, Tony. Tony Gollum. Uh, is there a way to skew track two footage so it appears at an angle on track one? Excellent question. He's got a longer question. Hopefully I, I said that right, to skew it. Uh, let me pull up my screen capture from my other computer here, uh, and I will get over to the screen. If I have, so Tony is asking if you have two pieces of footage, um, can you skew one of them? Let me shrink this down and get rid of some of this mess. Yes, you can, Tony. And the way you do that is, let's say I've got a piece of footage here. I'm going to snip this, and I'm going to bring my second piece above it. All right, let me move slide that up. And shrink it down out of my way. Okay, so now I have one footage over the other, right? So you can't, you remember that whatever, when you're in Filmora, whatever track is on top is the one you see, right? So in this stacking here, the bottom one, you can see my back. <laughs> and then if I move this top one in its way, it will always show that one first. You can affect the ability to see through them by going up to the compositing feature in the upper left. And you can dial back so that you can see through. I've used this in some of my ghost effects. But what Tony is asking, can you skew one? Yes. Lock the main track down in the lower left. Click on the upper track that you want to skew. Highlight it in green. And then up in the preview window, double left click. And here is that shrink thing I told you about before. We can grab the window and resize it. There's this little handle up top. And this little handle, if you left click and turn left or right, it will skew that so that you can change that angle. You can resize it. You can skew it left or right. You can move it all around. It'll give you some center point lines, too, when you know you're in the middle, which are great reference points. But you can flip it completely, left angle, left or right. Another thing you can do, I think you guys saw me do this in a recent tutorial, you can left click on the either side, drag it, and you can actually flip it 180 degrees so you get mirror image, right? I can stretch this out. Now all my words are backwards. I've done a mirror image now, right? And you can still turn it left diagonally, upside. You can flip it 180 degrees, upside down, whatever you want to do. Does that make sense? Tony, I hope that answered your question. Let's see. What question are we on? Number 18. Man, some, you guys have some great questions here today. I'm going to do number 19. 
uh, Crappy's Catching Adventures. If you upgrade to uh, 9, will you delete 8? Good question. When 9 was first introduced, you weren't able to actually download the upgrade from within Filmora. You, in Filmora 9 now, if there's an update, you go up into the Help tab, click on it, and you can check for an update. And if there is one, it'll tell you, and you can update. From 8, it didn't let you do that. You actually had to go to Filmora Wondershare website and download it. When I got it, it just let you download it. I still have 8 and 9 on my computer. In recent times, it's asked if you want to overwrite the existing Filmora. And it gave you the option. And you were able to say yes or no and keep eight. Uh, recently, someone has said to me that that option has changed. And either if you don't accept it overwriting, it won't download the new software. I can't confirm that because I haven't had to overwrite Filmora 8 in a long time. Um, but I will say if you overwrite 8 and with 9 and you're using 9 and you go, I don't like 9 as much as 8. You can go to some archive uh, websites. One I know of is File Hippo, keeps an archive download of almost every version of Filmora. You could go to filehippo.com and find Filmora 7, Filmora 8 version 213, version 8.716, and re download those. And your license applies. They just archive the old downloads so you can get back to an older version. I've used that a few times when a newer version has an update and it doesn't work the way I want. It's not yet. I've lost effects. I go back and I just download the uh, previous version. I get my effects back until they've fixed the glitch. So that's, um, that's my answer for you. Will it delete eight? I'm not sure if it still does, but even if it does, you can go back and grab eight again from another archive website, Tony. Ah, sky crappy. Sorry. Or SK's crap. I can't speak. SK crappies. Catch SK's Crappy Catching Adventures. This is why I'm not a fisherman. I can't even say the words. Never mind. Fish for these things. Uh, next question. Uh, travel, travel, don, uh, travel Droner. I find, I find like doing speed ramping in Filmora kind of different than doing it on other expensive editors. Is there any specific speed you use to make well, jumping faster than super slow motion and again fast speed? Blah, 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 blah. This is what I'll tell you. Um, yeah, Filmora has pretty good speed ramping features. It means you just go into the clip, you right-click on it. We did this a minute ago. Speed and duration. You can change speed up or slow down the footage. One thing you want to know in any editor is your eye only catches 24 frames per second. Have you ever seen the reason that a lot of um, films were always, big-budget films were always, back from the day, filmed 24 frames per second? They, they call it that cinematic look. It's That's how many frames your eye actually processes. But your eye can actually process higher frame rates. It doesn't see every frame, but your brain sees it as being more crisp, more clear, right? So when you get up to 60 frames per second, you can get a much crisper looking piece of footage because your eye recognizes whichever frames it does catch are very crisp and very detailed because they're not blurring it all together. So what you want to do is if you want to do really good slow motion and keep it crisp, you want to film at 120 frames per second if you can. 60 will work, but when you slow something down, let's say you had a 60 frame per second piece of footage and you cut that in half, you're down to 30. The, slow, the more you start heading towards that 24 number, the more glitchy it starts looking because your eye starts seeing the fact that the frames are being separated. So if you can film in 120, it'll be much better for slowing it down. In terms of speeding it up, a little less, uh, a little less problematic. You could take a 30 frames per second and speed it up pretty quickly um, and get it to go pretty, pretty fast and look pretty good. Keep in mind again, if you have 120 frames per second and you're trying to double the speed, then you're trying to get 240 frames to all happen at once. You're asking your editing software to do a lot. So just figure out which way you're going with. If you want to slow down, try to film at a higher uh, frame per second rate for uh, the frame rate FPS. Uh, 60 to 120 is better. If you're trying to speed something up, not so problematic. 30 plus, 30 to 60 is, is fine. You don't need to go past 60 to get something looking really good when it's uh, sped up. Next question. Uh, let's see. Hey, Sandra D, she's uh, saying hi to Nick, new subscriber, or a subscriber there. Everyone should be a subscriber to, to, uh, to D. I mean, to Nick or D, both D and Nick. D, Sandra D just said hi to Nick. Sandy D just said hi to Nick. There's a lot of D's and Nick's right in that sentence right there. <laughs> Where's D Niven when I need him? Uh, the next question we had is, no, I'm getting there. Number 21. 
Pappy Popper, Pappy Popper, Popper, Pappy Popper. Roughly, how many pattern interrupts do you plan to include for your videos or do you opt for what feels right? Example, one every 10 seconds. What Pappy's talking about here is pattern interrupts is when you're making a video and you're trying to change the look to keep it visually engaging. Um, I don't have a specific pattern. It depends what I'm doing. If I'm doing a tutorial, instead of pattern interrupts, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use that pan and zoom trick. See how my frame right now is very static and I'm just talking to you guys right through the camera? One thing that's really cool is if you are doing a tutorial or talking to the camera and, and you want to create a little more visual engagement without constantly jumping around, if you're making a point like I'm making right now, you can use that crop and zoom feature we talked about earlier and you can slowly start to pan in. Not a lot, just create the end screen a little bit smaller for the frame. And what it does is all of a sudden while you're making that point, the camera zooms in. Right, you get a little closer, and you go, and all of a sudden it feels like, wow, this point is really important because the camera comes in. And you can do the opposite. I'll do motion. I'll pan across. I'll move. A lot of times when something is real static like this live stream, and I'm doing a tutorial, I'll do not just pattern interrupts in terms of cutting the film and changing to either a B-roll or a new camera angle. I'll move the footage. I filmed it from a stationary cam camera, but I'll add a little bit of a crop or a zoom or a pan. I'll move across slowly on certain things. And it gives that visual motion that makes something feel more compelling than just this, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, Pappy, great question. Uh, number 22, Harley. Is this Harley Pebbly? Um, can you ramp up the speed of these effects, uh, i.e. linear brazier inter interpolation? Um, That's a two-part answer. Some, some of the effects, you can increase the speed of the effect. And it's, like I said before, it's by snipping, applying the effect to the piece of footage, and then shortening the piece of footage. The shorter the piece of footage, the faster the effect happens. Okay? For effects, not for transitions. Transitions, you can overlay and stretch them. So uh, I think a lot of you guys know this. Let's switch over to my screen. If you have two pieces of footage... Um, and you wanted to put a transition in between them, in the upper left, you click on your transitions, you find the transition you wanted to use. You can also use the little search bar and type in what you want. So like if I want to dissolve, I could type in DI, dissolve comes up. If you put a transition, drag it down in between two pieces of footage, you can drag and stretch the transitions and make them longer or shorter. But in terms of actually adding in an effect, Let's say this first piece of footage under effects. Um, let me see what we got for filters, uh, overlays, or elements. I don't know which one I want to use. If the utilities are good. If I brought down a specific element or effect um, into that section and dropped it onto it, I could shrink the effect or I could put that effect above it and shrink it as well and that will change the speed of the effect. So it depends on the effect. Um, another way you can do that is if you add the effect to the piece of footage, you can then export it and bring it back in afterwards. We call that a bounce, and you can change the speed of the footage with the effect added into. You guys have seen me do that a few times. Bounce it, bring it back in, and then stretch it back and forth. Sometimes I'll have like a pan. When I did the Marvel intro, I had all that footage flipping. That was like the very intro, all those pieces of comic book footage flipping. I exported it, brought it back in. Then once I brought it back in, I could change the speed by speeding up, shortening that footage, or changing the pace, speed, and duration of that piece of footage. Or I could even add extra pan and zoom onto it so it did all these stacking of effects because some were already interlaced into that bounced footage and I added new ones on top. Get some really cool layering going on. Harley, I hope that answered your question. There's a longer answer that I will talk to you about <laughs> that involves um, that involves a couple other steps. Question number 23, V Worldwide. V, what's going on, my friend? Um, so would you recommend getting the subscription for Filmora or the lic licensing effects and music and stuff? For the licensing... Let me try to read that again. Would you recommend getting the subscription for Filmora for the licensing effects and music and stuff? They do have a pretty great effects package and music. I personally, I, people get really crazy about music. I think that the YouTube audio, audio library has some great music and it's free. I use, most of my music comes from there. I'm also a musician, so I'm a little bit 
I'm, you know, jaded because if I need something and then I don't have it, I can make it. But um, uh, TubeBuddy also has um, some free music that comes with your license that you're access to. I believe Epidemic Sound is in there. It's been a while since I've used theirs as well, even though I work for TubeBuddy. You'd think I would know this. Um, I would say if there's something in Filmora from the store that you want and need, get it. I'm a minimalist. I think use what you have. Go for the free options first. And when you've, when you've exhausted those possibilities and they aren't doing what you want, then step up to paid things. I do that with um, Adobe Stock, stock Adobe footage. Like when I make my thumbnails, I'll go to Pixabay or take my pictures myself uh, or find something that works, and I'll use that. If I can't find the image I'm looking for, I have a subscription to Stock Adobe, and I'll pay for the image to use inside of my video for a thumbnail, uh, some piece of something that I don't have that I need. I'll pay for it, and then I'll have that to use in my footage, uh, in my video, or in my thumbnail. But if I can find it for free and it does it, I pay. I'm, you know, I'm frugal. That's that's a nice way of saying I'm cheap. <laughs> but yeah, I would I recommend it. I think some of the stuff that they have in their effects packs that you pay for is fantastic. It's fantastic. Um, and if those effects you want them and need them, buy the subscription. And a lot of times you can buy the stuff, make the videos you want, and you don't have to continue with the subscription afterwards. Um, you know, you can sort of sign up for a year, get the stuff, or they have some limited sections. I can't remember what their smallest amount of sign up is. I'll have to ask them. But you can get the stuff you need and not sign on for life. Um, just sign on as you need things. I do that with TubeBuddy before I worked for them. I'd sign up for the Legend license for a month, do some A-B testing, and then drop back down to the lower Pro license because I didn't need to do A-B testing every month. Uh, next question, number 24. Can you guys hear me okay? Sometimes I fall off the mic. Uh, modern day tech, how do I get hairs like, how do I get hair like yours? Uh, Rogaine, Rogaine, wig, implants. Um, I, <laughs> that, you know what? If you really want hair like mine, ask Nick Nimmin uh, to go sweep the bathroom floor uh, from the house that we shared, and he'll probably be able to give you plenty. <laughs> Nick, Nick and I had the same wing of the two buddy house, which our bedrooms are off the same section and we shared a bathroom and I try to be pretty clean. Like I'm going like, to take a shower, clean everything up, but I shed like a Burmese mountain dog, period. I mean, it's like hair. I get out of a bath. It's like hair everywhere. I tried to clean up. Now you remember Nick is the opposite of me, right? So he, he was like, after the bath, he's like, yeah, yeah, man, your hair was everywhere. <laughs> like, we, we could have built another Daniel from what was left in the corners of the bathroom. I, I, uh, I apologize for that, Nick. Uh, question number 25 from Zanks. My Filmora is not producing audio. I have restarted my computer, reloaded the file, and the problem seems to be when it starts, it goes very slow and then fast again and not playing audio. I don't know how to fix it, but I, if you do, I don't. I, that would be great. That specific problem I have not run into. I would check and make sure what kind of file you are using. I know that... Uh, Filmora, there's certain um, codecs that it doesn't like to import, and it'll import improperly. So make sure you're using the recommended codecs and the uh, recommended types of files that you bring in uh, so that they're going to perform properly. Uh, one of my standbys is if you ever know that you're doing everything right, but Filmora is acting weird, I've done this a million times, back up your project files, make sure you have them saved, uh, and then uh, uninstall Filmora and download a fresh copy. I wish there was a better answer than that, but I can't tell you how many times I had effects that weren't working or something was glitching or something wouldn't pull up, complete missing effects sections. I would just save my project file so I didn't lose anything, uninstall completely uh, the Filmora that was installed on my computer, go to the website, download a fresh copy of the most recent Filmora version. Everything was fine. You hear that, Filmora? Stop making us do that. <laughs> I hope that answered your question. Uh, question number 26 from Booger Breath. All right. <laughs> How to slowly turn the volume down on an audio track so you can add different audio. I can cut the audio and lower the second, but it plays different transitions softly. This is super easy. Let me show you this one. Uh, let's go over and screen capture from, let's see, here. Okay. That's a nice pose right there, huh? Let me get rid of all the stuff I've got going on. So, um, if you have a piece of content 
uh, whether it's got audio attached to it or not attached to it, it doesn't matter. You can do either one. Uh, I'm going to cut this down just to show you. I'm going to cut two pieces. Uh, and again, it I don't know which overlap you were using, but each one has audio, correct? So I've got two clips here. On the first clip, if I double left click on it, in the upper left, you will see I am in the video tab. You can click on the audio tab, right? So now this allows me to control just the audio attached to this first section. If I move the playhead to where I would like this to start turning down, Filmora 9 thankfully added keyframing, right? So let's put the, the playhead where I would like this volume to start turning down. And up right under the, see this volume bar on the left? There's a little left arrow, a dot, and a right arrow, right below where it says 0.00. .00. Click on that center dot, and it will add a keyframe. Did you see it add it right into there? And all that does, it's a marker point, okay? Now, if you move forward near the end, put the playhead there, hit that center dot again, it adds another dot. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can either grab right here, grab that dot, and pull it down, and it will fade out from the last dot to the new dot. That's why we put two dots in, right? Because we had to have it, if I just put a dot at the end, it would have started fading right from the beginning. You have to have one keyframe where you want it to start turning down and then one where you want it to end. And you can actually move those around. You can physically put your mouse over them and grab and pull them where you want. Or if you go back up to this section, you can use those arrows will take you to the proper keyframe, left and right. And then you can use the volume. See, I'm grabbing the volume up in the upper left, and it's moving the volume of that keyframe up and down. And you can add keyframes wherever you want. So you can have this turn down a little bit. You can move the playhead right to here, up in the upper left below the volume swell. Click on that center dot. It'll add another one. And you can bring it back up again. And you can control your entire volume track, whether it's attached to a video or not, and have it swell up, swell down, swell up, do whatever you want by adding those keyframes and assigning what volume level each one of them should be at. Does that make sense? I hope that made sense. I think it made sense. It made sense in my head. Um, uh, Mike Phillips, just I just noticed in the chat, I just asked a question but then saw hashtag not sponsored. Should be. <laughs> did you put it into the... Um, did you put it into the questionnaire, Mike? There's a questionnaire link that's down in the description. Uh, if you have a question, it's, uh, that's where I'm reading questions from. Uh, okay, Booger Breath, I hope that <laughs> Booger Breath, I hope that answered your question. Let me see. Live webcam coming back over here. Let me get me back up. Uh, next question is from Premix and Pedals. What is the easiest way to sync video from one source to audio from another source? You rock. I think I kind of covered that. Um, in terms of syncing it, if while you're recording it, it, it just depends. If it's all being recorded at the same time, it'll be in sync. Um, so if you're using the different sources, like if you're in Fillmore and you're using recording your webcam and then coming in f with your microphone track, uh, if you use screen capture, I'll come back over for one second so I can explain. Sometimes my, my words fail me. If we were in Filmora and you wanted to, let's say, okay, you were in a fresh, fresh project with nothing in here, up in the upper left, you'll see the import dropdown, and to the right of that is record. Record has a dropdown that allows you to record from webcam. It allows you to record your PC screen or record a voiceover. If you were using your PC screen, that will open up a window. Uh, let me drop down here. Can you see the center? This is the PC recorder that will allow you to control uh, the speakers of what the system is hearing. Uh, and if you click on the box to the right, that'll turn on the microphone. And the drop-downs allow you to uh, assign where the audio is coming in from a microphone, uh, the system audio, so that if there was music playing, let's say you were doing screen capture and you were capturing a game, but you always wanted to have, also wanted to have your voiceover, this will allow you to um, sync both of those, have them come in as inputs. Uh, if you click on each, it'll put an X by them and shut them off. That's how you end up doing those syncing. In post, I think I covered... Uh, how to take audio and sync it with video a little bit earlier in the live stream. If you missed it, go back and in the replay, check that out. And I showed how you can actually look at the waveforms and sync them up. If you're using just raw audio that has no video, uh, so raw video that has no audio, let's say you filmed something on a camera that had no audio, and now you have a separate audio track from a microphone. Great trick to do is clap in your video. Even if it has no audio, clap. 
So when your hands come together and you know you've clapped, you can look at your audio track, see the spike from the clap, and line it up right when your hands come together. Really good trick for when you're doing your filming, clap. Great way to, great way to create points to lock together whether your video has audio or not. Dean Nimmin tells me to do that all the time, clap. Usually when he's in the room, he's like, yeah, can you clap? You bet I can, mister. <laughs> uh, next question. Good leftovers. What are good leftovers? Pizza? Sometimes Chinese. Sometimes Chinese doesn't come back around really well in the microwave, though. You got to, like, air fry it or something. Um, that's about it. Uh, what other leftovers are good? Maybe Swedish meatballs? Um, how do you pan and zoom a picture in picture? You don't. You don't. Um, that's Filmora 8, picture in picture. Um, it, you can... It, the reason Filmora 9 came out and why you should all make sure that you're updating and upgrading to Filmora 9, which your Filmora 8 license applies to, it doesn't cost you anything more, uh, is that you have the ability to have multiple tracks. Filmora 8 used to use picture in picture. You had your main track and all these other tracks underneath it. Um, and you could add picture in picture. Filmora 9 took that to a new level and, and went up and gave you the ability to have all separate tracks in every transition, every effect, every bit of crop zoom, was you now have the ability to do on every single video track. That's why I tell people, nine is better. I know some of you guys are still stuck with eight, and you're like, I don't want to give up. Nine is better, more functionality. Every track can have every single effect and transition applied to it. Uh, next question, number 29. Oh, I'm getting close here. Um, Corinne, Daniel, do you have any suggestions on how to deal with very long and variable clip video? How do you piece that? Uh, how do you piece that out so it, that it works? That's more of a structure thing, Corinne. Um, again, I always try to look at that's. I get into my. I get into the structure of how I build stuff, and I use my YouTube analytics to see how the audience likes it. That's. I make all my decisions. Um, they're data driven. Right, So I sit here and I film all kinds of stuff. I put them together. I see how it does. I see how you guys react to it in the comments section. I see how the uh, audience retention reports are. I see what the click-through rate looks like. I watch where people start tuning out during my in my relative retention and absolute retention reports in YouTube analytics. And if I see I've put something together that I start losing people, I change the way I put things together. I shorten them up. I make them tighter. But right off the bat, when I'm making something, my whole goal is I try to keep it interesting. If it's not interesting to me, then it's not going to be interesting to someone else. So my first level of filter is do I think it's good, right? If I see something in there and I'm like, oh, I too many ums and ahs or I made mistakes or this is boring, a lot of times I'll make something and I'll put it aside. And I'll come back to it 24 hours, 48 hours later and look at it with fresh eyes because the decision I made this morning if I have some perspective on it a day or two from now, I may be able to say, you know what? It looked good at the time, but looking back at it with fresh eyes, something's not right. It's too slow. It doesn't play together right. And then I have the ability to go back in and tweak it again. I can't tell you how many vid videos I've made and I threw away. They just didn't work. I thought they were good. I thought I was on the track. I thought I had them scripted out. But then I, I've just thrown a third of my stuff away anyhow because I thought it was okay. It just didn't do it right. It didn't hit the mark. So... The best thing that you can do as a creator is become your own critic, right? Figure out what works and what's great for you. And ask the people around you. Don't be afraid to, you know, someone you know, a friend. I, all the time, I'll send my clips before they're ever uploaded to Brian G. Johnson, and I'll go, what do you think of this hook? And if he loves it, I'll go, oh, it's a good hook. I can keep going with this. But if he's like, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I know that's his nice way of saying it kind of sucked. <laughs> and then I'll move on to something else or I'll refilm it and try it a different way. Um, number 31, we're close. Uh, how do you make your own? This is good leftovers again. How do you make your own intro and outro? I actually have a video on my channel, how to make intros. Um, and I have one on how to do end screens. So both of those videos exist on the channel with some free elements. I actually gave away free end screen uh, elements from my website that's linked in that video, free to download, use them. Uh, check out those two videos. They'll get you there. Let's see. Uh, wow, Good Leftovers has all the questions. How do you edit a good thumbnail? Uh, that's a little different thing. I'll cover that in a YouTube video. Um, I do have a video on my channel about thumbnail ideas and how to what you should be thinking about when you make a thumbnail. When it comes to editing them, 
You can do them in Filmora, and maybe I'll touch on that. But I tend to use uh, Affinity. Some of you use Photoshop. Um, I used to do them free on Pixlr.com, which is a website that lets you do, it's like a Photoshop layers. It's free. Uh, there's different ways to do that. I'll cover that in a future video. But that's less Filmora. That's more YouTube. Good question. I'll put it on my list. Question number 33. Guess who it's from? Good leftovers. How do you make your own channel logo? <laughs> Very similar to my intro and subscribe button. Um, again, that's a little more of a Photoshop thing, uh, and I will deal with that as a separate question. Are you the rest of these? No. Now we're back to SK Crap. I'm going to get it right. SK's Crappy Catching Adventures. Can you adjust your volume up? I've got my volume all the way up, and your voice is still low. Really? Is it me? What do you guys think? Am I quiet? I might be quiet. Uh, if I'm quiet, let me know. You know what happens sometimes is when I'm on the mic, it's better. I don't use any compression li uh, for a live feed. I do in my videos. Uh, and a lot of times when I turn my head, I get quiet. If you look underneath the video, though, um, there should be a little uh, slider control volume for the video itself, and you can crank it up. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, next question. Uh, question number 35. How do you animate your own black bars in a video? So to do the cinematic thing, is that what you're thinking? Like to do the black bars top and bottom? You can actually add those as layers. Uh, that's kind of a cool thing. Let me, um, let me show you how to quickly do something like that. You've seen like when you do those widescreen uh, effects where you usually see your images have these black bars above and below. Let's take this girl. If you want to do that, I'm going to crop her. Let me crop her to fit. Hang on, because she actually looks a little crop to begin with this is what you can do here's a piece of footage and let's say you want to make it more cinematic up in your upper left when you're in the media tab in the drop down you see this sample colors click on that and pick a color let's take black as a good one right that's the color we're used to bring that down it will totally black out your screen take your main picture in the lower left and click the lock button so it's not going to move and we're going to do that trick again let's go up to your preview window and double left click on that now you can change the size of your black bar. And you can put one right here, right, like that. And if you wanted to, you can right click on this, that upper track, hit copy. I'm gonna move over to here, past this timeline, hit paste, that'll, re that'll replicate it. And I'm gonna lift it up, if I can do this carefully, and I'm gonna put it into the track above so that it'll give me two black bars. There we go. Uh, let me bring back to the beginning. I now have, I'm gonna lock the second track. I've got my two black bars are actually stacked. You can't tell, because I, I duplicated it. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I've got the bottom two tracks locked. I'm gonna grab the top one. I'm gonna bring that up, put it up top. And you can adjust these to where you want them. And again, it's sort of like, there's a specific size you can get with these. You can get kind of cool. I know that there's a specific cinematic size, but you can just add these black bars top and bottom any way you want. I'm going to unlock the bottom one and drag this up a little bigger. And what that'll do is as it plays, now it'll give you those upper and lower black bars and give you that cinematic look. Pretty cool thing to do. A lot of times if you want to make it feel like, oh, man, it's just like in the movies, it'll give you that widescreen effect. Uh, next question. Let's see, live webcam, let me cross back over here. Uh, how do you move each video's track one to two? How do you move videos from track one to two? Just like I just showed you. Grab it, left click and hold, drag it up to your next, um, to your next track. If you grab a piece of footage, that's something I've talked about before that's really cool. Let me give you my screen again. If you um, have a track, let's see this top track right here, it just says black. If I left click and hold it and lift it up, It'll create another track. Boom. It automatically, you're telling Filmora, I need another track above this to put it into. And you can do that as many times as you want. Just keep bringing it up and you can move them around. A lot of times I have a piece over here, right? And I'll bring it up and go, I need another track. I just lift up and left. It'll create the track. The other thing you can do is on the left in this drop down, you'll have options for add a video track and add an audio track. That will do it that way too. If you want to add an audio track, that little plus bar right above the top upper left of your timeline gives you that drop down. Okay, let me see what else we have for questions here. 
Uh, next question is, we're getting near the end of these. I'll talk to you guys in chat if you have something that I haven't hit on. Uh, hi, Dan Daniel. Does it make a huge difference if you enable GPU acceleration? Yes and no. <laughs> One of the things we've known, GPU acceleration is it tells your card to speed up the process by which um, it, it assigns that video right to your, your graphics processing card and allows it to, I, sorry if I'm a little out, I don't know why I have my camera set for autofocus today, but I do. Um, it allows you to, come back to me, it allows you to uh, speed up the process by which Fillmore is dealing with that footage. Sometimes they've had a glitch where some of the effects and the type of processor you have, depending on your system, those effects do not like the GPU acceleration. So sometimes you'll have it on, and all of a sudden, like, your effects don't work properly. So again, it's a little bit of give and take because there's a couple glitches they're working out. But in the upcoming Filmora um, updates, that should be solved. If your editing flow is moving smoothly, you don't have to enable the GPU acceleration. I do it always, um, or diminish the frame size in the playback window and the preview. Um, it just depends how good your computer is. If it can handle it and flow with it, go with it. Um, I prefer using the GPU acceleration just because it speeds things up. But I've had certain systems where it actually caused some problems, and we shut it off, and the system ran fine. So depending on your system, try it both ways. See which one works better. Uh, question number 38. Hope you can hear me. Mike Phillips, do you have a Filmora discount code or anything to share with peeps here? I do. Uh, maybe Ed could find it for us. Um, it is on my main channel. There is a video that actually says, maybe I can find it too, um, that says it's a free license. The video is called Free License. If you go through the Tube Ritual group, um, the links are in that video, and the Tube Ritual group is Brian G. Johnson's group. Pinned to the very top is a 30-day free trial free registration code, no watermark, everything works, of either Filmora 9 or Filmora Pro. And if you like the software after 30 days, it allows you to purchase it for 30% uh, off the actual price. So that'll give you both ways. I'm going to drop that in the chat. I think I have it here. There should be the link to that video. I think I did that right. Um, so, yeah, you go through the Tube Ritual Facebook group. That's free to join. Great group for creators. If you're looking to figure out how to grow your channel, you should be in that group anyway. Pinned to the very top, free uh, link with the registration code. Everything works perfectly. No restrictions for 30 days on either one. You're not locked in. You don't have to buy. But if you choose to, 30% off. It was a deal we worked with Filmora. I thought they were pretty cool to do that. Uh, next question. Number 39. Um, will you leave live stream like this as public or turn it unlisted? I will leave this live. I've been leaving these live as long as they're driving views. If in the future they kind of stop driving views or people don't want them, I'll unlist them. Um, but they've, the other last live stream I did seems to drive, you know, 50, 60, 80 views a day. As long as you people are watching and you find them useful, I'll keep them listed. Uh, I won't delete them. If someone comes back to me, if I do unlist them and someone needs to find them and so do you have that, at least they'll be unlisted so I can give you the link in the comments section and you can go watch it. I'll never take them off the channel. I'll just unlist them so they may not be sitting in the middle of my playlist or getting suggested out into other people's uh, junk all the time. Sometimes I, I don't love having my stuff sit there for too long. I like you guys seeing the fresh content. Live streams, yeah, if you like them, I'll keep doing them. Uh, question number 40, Eddie M3. Hi, Daniel. Is there a way to smooth out reduced camera shake other than the stabilizer? Uh, stabilizer. That's really the only feature they have in film more is that stabilizer feature. Um, the other way to do it is don't be so shaky when you film. <laughs> I say that's so silly, but it's so true. You really, um, you know, a lot of the cameras that we use and the gimbals that we buy are for that thing. We're really trying to reduce that shake. Uh, and it's something that every creator fights with, especially when you're doing action cam footage, vlogging, moving on the run, anything where you're not just sitting with a fixed stationary camera. The stabilizer is the best feature that Filmora currently has. It's the only one they have. If it doesn't work for you, then unfortunately you're going to have to work harder on the pre-production end and really try to lock your footage in and get it as stable as possible. Uh, question number 41. Uh, Alisa, Jots Designs. Is it possible to merge two, the files of two projects? For example, I have one from my intro, and I would like to add that into the video project I'm working on, be able to adjust the volume, 
adjust the video and sound uh, individually instead of adding it to the video, that's, uh, and that's it. <laughs> Hopefully that made sense, kind of. Is there a way to merge the two project files, merge the files of two projects? What I would suggest you do, not merge in that sense, but what you can do is take the files. When I make a project, I do it very simple. Um, and let me show you how I set up my projects and maybe this will be useful for you, maybe it won't. Whenever I create a project, anything that I'm making, when I set up, I'll show you via my input window. I'll do something like, you can see my import here. I may have, um, like a Filmora Dolly Zoom. I'll make one file that says, like I did a Dolly Zoom tutorial, and in that I'll make a folder for that under Filmora, and I'll have three folders, one for audio, one for images, and one for video. And every one of my projects works that way so that I always have the ability to find the audio I used in that particular project, the images I might have used along the way, and the actual video clips. So if I ever need those and bring those into another project, they're all right there and easy to find. That's the fastest way I found to be able to quickly keep your stuff organized, move through it, have it do what you want it to do, and never lose track of where things is. So the file system that you create on your own system and your own computer is the best way to control that stuff, grab it and bring it back in. I had said earlier, um, it was the man with the hat had asked, is there a way to create folders that stay with me, stuff that I use all the time. Absolutely create a, uh, a Filmora project that has those basic things, call to actions, end screens, music that you always use, and save that as your template file, right? Filmora, save it as Filmora template. And then whenever you open up a project and you're about to build something new, but you know, you always use these images, this music, you just open up that template as your starting point, and when you go to save it, just don't save it as a template, save it as a different file name, whatever your finished project is, and you'll always have that one template to start with to bring other stuff in over and have those basic files right there. I hope that answered your question. Um, and if it's just other files you want to bring in, just make sure you know where they're all located on your computer as files, merge them, and then you can grab them from there. Question number 42, Jessica, if I'm all done with the video and I want to squeeze something in the last minute, how do I move everything over to get that clip in? Boy, I get this question all the time. That is a great, great question. Uh, let me go over to, uh, let's see, right here, screen capture. I get this question a lot. Let's say, let me get rid of some of the stuff and unlock. Um, let's say you had a, project and i'm just going to have to make a pretend project for you here that's all clipped out right this is all clipped out you get all these millions of edits going on and the last minute you go oh maybe there's a hundred of these right and you're like oh man i needed to squeeze something right in at the beginning like between the first and the second frame the way you do that is you would click on let's say you want it between the first and second click on the second frame that'll highlight your second frame Go to the end, hold down the shift key on your keyboard, and click on the last frame. That will highlight everything in between where you started and where you ended. And then just left click and move it out of the way. Now you can bring down something. If it's longer than you need, you can put in a track above and resize it for what you want, drop it into place, and then do the same thing. The stuff at the end. Click on the first one, hold the shift key on your keyboard, hold it down, and left click on the last frame, and that'll hold everything together and you can move it back over. And when it's lined up, you'll see those white lines show up, showing it's right on spot. And that's how you sneak something in. Now, if you have multiple tracks, let's say you had, um, I'm gonna copy these. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can paste them up to this track. Highlight that, okay. So let's say you had multiple tracks, right? So that you had, well, Dan, uh, that was great, but I got stuff on a whole bunch of tracks. Let me show you how to do that. Let's say you had stuff up here and you still wanted to put stuff between the first and second frame, but you got other tracks. Start with your top track, go down to your last track holding the shift key. It will highlight everything. Now hit your control key and then click on the ones you don't want to move. Like the first one, I'm holding control. I'll click on the first frame. It unhighlights it and keeps everything else highlighted and then I can move all of them. That makes sense? And then you can bring something down, right? Then you can bring a piece of footage, 
I like when it's too long like that, I'll put it into a higher track, bring it down to the size I want. Now I can go the same thing. Left click on the top left, go to the lowest right. It's highlighted everything, so I hit control. I don't want to move the first two. Hold control down, click the picture of the girl with the eyes and this owl. Everything else is highlighted. Slide that back over. Everything is now, I've now inserted a clip. Everything's ready to go. Uh, okay. Let's see. Where are we out of questions? Oh my gosh, do we get through all the questions? I can't believe it. It's like a miracle. Uh, um, is there any way, I'm just looking right quickly in here. Uh, Mike, good seeing you. Um, is there any way once you've detached audio and ported separate audio cleaner track that you can merge it with the video layer? Like re-lock them together? No. Um, well, I don't want to say completely no. No. <laughs> One of the things that Phil Nord doesn't really do is once you detach the audio, it doesn't really let you re-lock everything together. You can do what I just did. If you have it in place, you can highlight them all and move them all at once, Corinne. But it doesn't allow you to re-lock back to the video track. Movavi does. That was one of the things I liked about Movavi is it lets you um, lock tracks back together and then just shift them all at once. You move the upper track, it brings the audio with it. Filmora, hopefully, you know, it's one of those things. I haven't really asked them if they plan on putting that in, but I know people have. But I'll make sure that suggestion goes in. Um, are there any other questions that in the uh, chat that anything I missed here? Uh, I tried to get through as much as I could. Um, I want to show you one more trick. All right, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to show you one more really quick trick that people have been asking me that that I, I'm just going to throw here. There's a thing called an, uh, an eyeball transition that people have been asking me where like the, you can zoom in on someone's eye and then zoom back out and be in, like a, be in a different location or have something different happen. Um, and... Let me see. What was that question? Do you know when comes the uh, 265 codec to Filmora? No plans of bringing 265 in nor, uh, into Filmora right now. They're currently using uh, H.264. That's what YouTube, YouTube also supports. It doesn't support H.265. Uh, so right now, as far as I know, it's not planning on coming in. It's Most of the stuff we're working with is trying to get to YouTube anyway. So for me, it's not a big one. For some of you 4K guys who are planning on not putting it on YouTube but somewhere else, I know that's a pain in the butt. Uh, but let me show you this one other thing that's really cool, uh, screen capture. Let me get over here and show you this neat trick. Because this is one of those cool effects that people have been asking, like, how do you do that? I'm like, well, that's actually a really easy one that I want to show you how to do. Let me get rid of all these tracks. I've actually got some stuff here thinking about it. This is a track. This is all, I, any of these images and stuff, I tend to get them from Pixabay or, you know, Pixabay's a good one. These ones came from Pixabay. Um, here's an image of a girl's eye, Right. You know what? Let's use this other one because she's more black and white. Image of a girl's face. I'm going to right-click on this. I'm going to hit crop to fit so that in my screen up in the upper right, that now fits my window. Right? Girl with blue eyes. Let's grab this. Um, I've got this cat image here, too. That's this kind of a cat with blue eyes. Right? I'm going to right-click on that footage. And I'm going to click on crop to fit. And now that fits my full screen. So when I export this, there's no black on either left or right or anything. That image is um, going to fill up the entire video screen. So I've got the girl, and I've got this cat. Now watch this cool transition you can do. Um, I'm going to right-click on the footage of the girl with the eyes. Let's bring the, this over so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to click on Crop and Zoom. Now we, caught, we were talking about this Pan and Zoom feature earlier. Let's right-click on Pan and Zoom, and on that center end screen... Let's click in the middle so we're now using the finish point. This tells us where the zoom's going to go to. Let's zoom in really small and go down to the center of, let's go with her left eye. Now, in this custom section down below, make sure it's set for 16 by 9, all right? Because we want it to be 16 by 9. If you distort it in some way, it could be problematic because it can be something that could leave those black lines again. And we don't want that. We want 16 by 9. So 16 by, by 9, let's zoom down right toward the center of her eye. Okay? And what that is going to do is this piece of footage is going to start out, and it's going to shoot right in, and it's going to zoom in on her left eye. All right? Very cool. Eyeball transition. Now let's go to the footage of the cat. Right-click on it. And let's open up the crop and zoom feature as well. Now, in this one, we'll go to pan and zoom. 
we want to start from the cat's eye and move out. And what it's going to make it look like you, you shot into the girl's eye and it shot back, zoom back out, and it wasn't the girl, she turned into the cat. It's that, it's that eyeball transition, they call it. Now, the way to do this, to swap these, right, the start is already set. We're at the center end screen. If we go down to the right and click this two arrows to recycle, it'll swap them. We talked about this earlier. That'll make the start, the end, and the end, the start. We want to make the small one the start because we're going to start in on the eye and work our way out. Make sure that's set by, for 16 by 9, right? That's our regular YouTube upload size widescreen. Let's zoom it all the way in and put it right in the center of this cat's eye. Now, if I did that properly, what you'll see is this will go in towards the girl's eye and then turn into the cat's eye and go back out. That's kind of cool. Watch this. So you'll see it goes in towards hers and then wham, comes back out. Now, that was a pretty cool one. If you have an image where the black of the eye is really big and you can really get in close like this owl footage, it makes it easier because there's so much black. That makes it easy to get right in on the black. If you have something where you can't get quite in as tight, use your transition effects and grab a dissolve effect and put a little dissolve in between the two, real short, shrink it down, and that'll help that transition look a little smoother so it doesn't, it's not a quite as harsh from the girl to the cat. It'll just smooth over, wham, and turn into that cat. Let me check that out really quickly. This is kind of a slow one, but you see it comes in on the girl. It gets to her eye. Wham, transition, she turns into a cat. How cool is that, huh? Now, you could do that with yourself. You could do that if you were in two different locations um, and you were looking right at the camera. If, you were in the if I was in the studio, I could film myself here and end the scene like this, film myself somewhere else, Laguna Beach, and I could do the same thing talking to the camera. I could zoom in from this footage into my eyeball and then st go to the next piece of footage of me at Laguna Beach and zoom out, and it would look like zam, wham, like, like it zoomed right in on me and I completely changed locations. That's one of the coolest transitions that I don't see a lot of people use, that eyeball transition, but I get asked about it all the time in the comments section. And it's as simple as that, pan and zoom. And if you want to turn yourself into a cat, that's kind of cool. If you're not a cat person, you can use a dog or a hamster or a squirrel or a zebra. But if you own a zebra, I think that's illegal in the United States. All right, listen, I think I've covered a lot of stuff here today. I think we got pretty far. Christian, Kathy, Corinne, everybody, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Darren, my pal, uh, that creaky blinder, he's got the greatest, he's got the greatest channel ever. Thank you very much for hanging out. If you liked what we got through today, if you have any other questions, make sure you leave them in the comments for future Filmora live streams that we do. If you thought this was good, definitely give a thumbs up and like this stream uh, and give me an idea of what you might want to see again. If you want to see a stream like this again, I'll be sure to do it because I want to make sure that I answer your questions. And sometimes this live format is the best way to do it. All right, listen, I love you guys. I really appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. Peace.